Hi, my name is Lena from Lena's Healing Haven. So for this video, we're going to continue the series of channeling divine beings. And um, for today, we're going to channel Buddha. Specifically, I'm going to channel Manjushri Buddha. So um, before I start, I'm just going to give um, a little short introduction about who Manjushri Buddha is because um, compared to other Buddhas, like Sakyamuni Buddha, who is our present Buddha, um, the Buddha that is most recently enlightened, 2,500 years ago. And the other more well-known Buddha would be Maitreya Buddha. Um, you may know him as the Smiling Buddha. The Chinese portray him as fat, bald, and always smiling. And he is the next Buddha that will come along after Sakyamuni Buddha. So in comparison to these two, Manjushri Buddha is um, less well known, although um, Buddhists who are more familiar with the Buddhist knowledge, they may know that Manjushri, Manjushri Buddha is the Buddha of wisdom. So right now, he is um, still in the process of attaining enlightenment. Um, that's why he is a future Buddha that will come after Maitreya Buddha. But um, because there are many different definitions of enlightenment, both in the human world and in the divine world. So um, in a few contexts, Manjushri Buddha is already considered enlightened. So um, it may seem a little bit confusing, but he is both a Bodhisattva as well as a Buddha. And um, I will not explain more on this point because um, it can get very subtle in how the definitions of enlightenment is about. So you can just accept that because of the different definitions and the different uh, perceptions, um, he is both a Bodhisattva and a Buddha. Okay? So without further ado, I'm going to start channeling now. Hi, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming to view this video. I have told Lena to let me handle today's video because I have spent eons of lifetimes mastering different virtues and understanding different levels of wisdom. And even though my time to come to this earth as Buddha is not yet here but i am very well prepared to do what i need to do to help people to gain enlightenment and i'm very eager for my time to come so i have asked lena to give me this opportunity to teach whoever has the affinity with me to view this video so that i can have a little warm-up to prepare for my time on earth as the future Buddha. So I have um, five things that I want to teach today. The first is about wisdom and compassion. There are many people who lack both wisdom and compassion. There are also many people who have wisdom but lack compassion. There are also many people who have compassion but lack wisdom. Obviously, we all need to aspire towards having both wisdom and compassion. And this is not something easy at all. Because to do so, you need to let go of the material life and focus on developing yourself spiritually. And this is something not many people are able or willing to do. In Singapore, all of you are very blessed. It is a safe country that's um, pros uh, prosperous and uh, provides many opportunities for people to fulfill their basic needs so that they can elevate themselves spiritually. So because Lena lives in Singapore and many of you are Singaporeans, 
I speak to you assuming that you are a Singaporean that you have to take this opportunity to build yourself spiritually and develop both wisdom and compassion. This is only so that you can enjoy a better life as well as be of a blessing to other people in your life. Wisdom allows you to be more detached from the drama in life. Compassion helps you to connect to people in a very meaningful and insightful way. So having both wisdom and compassion ensures that you have minimal problems and beautiful relationships. So it's only for your own good for you to develop yourself spiritually. Material possessions can only bring you that much pleasure. And it is, it is a kind of pleasure that does not go beyond the superficial and will not last for more than a day or two. So please focus less on uh, collecting things in your life and focus more on letting go and gaining more substance in your soul. The second lesson is on friendship. There are many different kinds of friends in the world. Most of them are not worth having. The friend that you should aspire to have is the kind who is uncondi unconditionally accepting of you and inspires you to be a better person. Obviously, such friends are rare and if you are lucky enough to have even one person whom you can consider to be such a friend, you should cherish this person deeply and always, always be a good friend back to this person. The third lesson is about clothing. This is a something that's more practical. Most people wear clothes so that they look good. So it's about fashion sense, it's about impressing people, it's about boosting your self-esteem. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. But I suggest that you start choosing your clothing for the sake of elevating your energy system as well. Different clothes will have a different effect on your energy system. The two main factors that uh, create this effect would be colors and cutting. Cutting should always be loose, comfortable, and organic. Do not wear clothes that make you feel uncomfortable, like you will have to suck in your stomach, or you have to refrain from walking in a certain way. Choose clothes that can make you feel at ease, that allow you to be mobile, that allow you to live your life effortlessly. So that's the points to be taken for cutting. As for colors, Lena has mentioned before in the previous video that black is a no-no in terms of color choice for clothes. This is something which I verify to be accurate as well. Black is a very heavy and dense color that has the effect of lowering the energy system and causing it to feel sluggish and stagnated. It is a great pity that so many people in this world consider black to be fashionable and attractive. But if you were to intuitively tune in to your moods and to your energy level, you'll find that whenever you wear black, your mood that day will always be more serious and somber, and your energy will always be denser as well. You can always create an experiment in your life. When you wear black for one whole week, and you wear other colors for the next week. The second week will always be the better one. 
You don't have to believe me. Create this experiment for yourself and you will experience the difference for yourself. Colors that are very good for the energy system will be blue, yellow, and green. Different people will require different shades of these three colors. People who are more flighty, who are more scatterbrained, who are more frivolous, they will benefit more from darker shades of these colors. People who tend to be more depressed, who tend to be bogged down by problems, and who have heavy responsibilities, they would benefit more from the lighter shades of these colors. Once again, you can always experiment for yourself. Choose colors that you think will make you feel good. And when you wear them for the day, notice what your mood is like and what your energy level is like. And if it seems positive, then make sure you wear that color more often. It's as simple as that. The fourth lesson will be books. In this particular era, books are getting less and less popular. This is something natural and this is something acceptable. But there are certain books which are very beneficial to be read at least once in your lifetime. There are three books in your world that are highly celebrated in the divine world. In, these three books are mostly channeled and one in particular contains healing energies that you will receive simply by reading the book. The first book is Louis Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. The second book is a surprise to Lena and maybe a surprise to you as well. The second book is Rodal, BFG, the BFG. This is a classic for children and it's a very enjoyable read even for adults. The reason why this particular book is highly, highly celebrated in the divine world is because it allows you to enter a world where your mind is most powerful. For those of you who have not heard of this book, it's got to do with dreams and how dreams can affect you in your daily life in terms of taking action. So reading this book will not create a big shift in you, but it will open your mind to a whole new world where dreams and imagination and friendship are highly important. It is a very, very fun book to read as well. So if you have not yet read this book, do take it, do pick it up in the library or in the bookstore. The third book is the one that contains healing energies. It is by Brian Weiss and it's called Only Love is Real. Brian Weiss is spelled as B-R-I-A-N W-E-I-S-S -S. I will not tell you more about this book because I do not want to spoil it for you in any way. To just summarize it very succinctly, it is a love story that happens in real life that is even more magical than any Hollywood story that you have ever heard about in the movies. This book contains healing energies from the divine and simply by reading this book, your heart will open and certain energy blockages may be released. So if you were to choose only one out of these three books to read, please read this one. It is a must. The last lesson for today is about detachment. Detachment is sometimes interpreted as not caring or being selfish or being uncaring. 
It may seem like that sometimes, but it does not mean that the person is necessarily cold-hearted. Detachment is an important quality to have if there is a lot of drama in your life. Sometimes we involve ourselves in drama because we are too soft-hearted. Sometimes it's because our boundaries are weak. And for some people, it's because we crave drama so as to distract ourselves from deeper issues that we do not want to face. Detachment is simply about being aware of what's going on without engaging it in an unnecessary way. It could be about seeing a loved one cry in front of you and feeling a sense of concern but not suffering together with the person because you can't bear to see the person's pain. Detachment will not cause you to be unhelpful to your loved ones. On the contrary, because it prevents you from having your energies drained. It will allow you to have greater capacity to respond to them in the way that's most, most beneficial to them. So this is something which everyone should seek to develop. Not to over-engage with the drama in your life and to learn to take a step back and to observe with coolness and wisdom and then to respond in the most appropriate way. So we have come to the end of this short sermon and I hope that you take all these five pieces of advices in these five lessons very seriously. Most of this advice is not something which you would have heard of in other settings. And you do not have to believe them blindly, but if you use your common sense and your logic and your intuition, and you find that these advices are worth experimenting with, then please do. And if it works, then continue with it. I'll end off here. Thank you. So that was um, Manjushri Buddha. And um, I quite enjoyed his teaching style. You notice that he speaks in a very interesting way. But, and, and, but um, seriously, um, when, I, when I do this kind of channeling, I am both a doer and an observer. So as he's giving, as he's giving all of these five lessons, I actually um, am paying attention to them as the words come out of my mouth. And I have to say his advice is brilliant. So I hope you enjoy this video. And um, I hope that uh, you'll watch it maybe another time, a second time, because it seems like uh, the channeling just now contains a very subtle thread of healing energy that can be only fully received if you hear it a second time. So if you have the time, please watch this video again. Okay, so um, if I don't recall wrongly, there's at least one more topic, one more video to be made that's about channeling divine beings, and I think it would be Mother Mary. So that video will be ready in two weeks' time, so please keep a lookout for it. So um, once again, uh, as, as always, thank you for watching and have a good day. Um, I hope to see you soon. Bye.